for where they've been for those who are just searching for an answer we say use us oh god Use Dream Big Leadership Church, oh God, to reach those people, oh God, that don't know where to go, what to do, or how to get it done. Just searching for an answer for life to change. So we are decreeing to them, oh God, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And no man can enter to the Father except by him. So God, we continue to lift you up so that you can draw all men unto you. We continue to reach your people, oh God. We're getting out of the four walls of the building, oh God, and touching lives, oh God. We are making a difference in this, in this city, oh God. And we thank you for the power that you've given us, oh God, to do just that. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask tonight, oh God, that whatever it is that you have for us to hear on tonight, God, that we open our hearts and open our minds and open our ears to receive it, oh God. God, I ask that you touch Dr. Butler tonight, oh God, that your wisdom flow from his belly, oh God, that you continue to crown his head with wisdom, that he is healthy, wealthy, and wise, oh God, that everything he needs from you, oh God, I ask that you fill him with the spirit of the living God on tonight. So that your people can receive exactly what they need on tonight, oh God. Father God, I thank you. I praise you for his very life. And that everything that he pours out, oh God, you restore 100 fold. And I decree and declare that no boomerang spirits will ever come into his presence, oh God. That he is covered by your angels, oh God. He's protected by your angels. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We praise you and we magnify your name. This is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God tonight. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to Dream Big Leadership Church. Back to Believe in Bible Study. Where we are training today's leaders for tomorrow's problems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody give Jesus a hand of praise tonight, tonight, Jesus. Glory to God. Listen, why don't you greet somebody that you did not come here with? Amen. Encourage them in the Lord. Hallelujah. You'd be surprised who hadn't had a high five, a hug. Amen. Can y'all take me down just a little bit, sound, sound team? Amen. Speak the word of the Lord over their life. That's perfect right there. Hallelujah. Where's her ledge? Amen. Tay, can you do me a favor? Can you grab that stool back there for me? Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this continues to be the day that the Lord has made. We continue to rejoice and to be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you glad to be alive? Glad to be saved? Glory to God. We just honor the Lord tonight for another opportunity, another opportunity to serve him, another opportunity to learn from him. Amen. I was talking to uh, a pastor this morning, just, in, just encouraging him in the Lord. 
you know, because, you know, pastoring is not easy. You know, sometimes people can make it look easy, but it's not. And I was telling him, we were just talking about um, all of the things that, that uh, the problems that we see, the issues and the struggles. And we see good things as well. But, you know, when you pastor, people come to you with their problems and their situations, and they won't help. And people don't, people don't want nothing you got out of a book. They want genuine, authentic help. And I was just telling him, after we were having a conversation about all of the things that we see, I said, man, but you understand, but you know what's so great? I said, it's, we have a privilege. We have a privilege to help people on God's behalf. It's not a burden. It's not a burden. But God trusts us to change somebody's family tree. That's a privilege. To wear this name Jesus, it's not a burden. I know what society may tell you. They want to make you feel like your faith is a burden. Your God is a burden. But let me tell you something. Your Christian walk is a privilege. Naming the name of Jesus is a privilege. And because a relationship with God is not cheap, it was paid with somebody's life. So that's the first thing that the enemy desires to take away from you on your journey. Is the ideal and the understanding that you're privileged. Anybody can just be a Christian. Anybody can just walk with God. No, they can't. You know the, you know the, the process, the journey the Holy Spirit has to go through to prep a person's heart. Amen. So it is a privilege. It is a privilege. Come on, tell your neighbor I'm privileged. Yes, you are. Amen. So listen, let me get into the word of God. Thank you, sound team. I want to get into the word of God. I want to continue. Um, I know they ain't fake. It's okay, Dr. Deal. I knew you were going to look. <laughs> I knew you were going to look. So let's go into uh, our teaching. And once again, you all, when I'm finished with this, uh, hey, Tish, I am going to make it available on our website. Um, but I like teaching the information first and then having you to document it. Um, and then, then, I'll, then I'll share the notes. And so we're continuing our journey on the eight prayer watches. I hope that y'all have uh, been blessed. I um just the testimony that testimonies that have been coming out of this time with the Lord have just been impactful, and it has been super encouraging for me to hear how people are growing in the things of God, how people are growing in the things of God, and so. Um, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to start off with the sixth watch. The sixth watch. So just as a preface for our conversation tonight, remember we said that God has created us to be watchmen. It is our responsibility and it is our duty. Penny, you got on my J's. Do my J's right there. It is our responsibility and it is our, our duty to be watchmen for God. As a matter of fact, the word of God instructs us to watch and pray. Watch and pray. So we said that um, timing with God is super important. God is not reactionary. God is not trying to catch up with anything. God doesn't wait for stuff to happen to us and, and try to find out what he's going to do after it happens. God is not doing that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. So even when Adam and Eve fell off, God still had a plan. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, even when you fall off, God has a plan. He didn't have to catch up. He don't have to think it out. It's already done. It's Isaiah said, it is the Lord who establishes the end from the beginning. In other words, he finishes a person's life. And then he goes back in time and places that, that person in time and walks out what God has created. 
So nobody in this room is a mistake. I told the young ladies that I was talking to uh, before I came here, there's no such thing as illegitimate children. There's illegitimate relationships. But we all come from the mind of God. Nobody in here is a mistake. It took the power of God to bring you here on the earth. So the timing of God is super important. And in the kingdom of God, as it pertains to us talking about times of prayer, we familiarize ourselves with two types of time. Anybody remember the two types of time? Chronos. Chronos. What's chronos? Clock time. What's kairos? God timing. So Dr. Tim went to the car lot. And all of the favor aligned itself together. <coughs> and the man said approved. Was that Kronos or Kairos? Kairos. It was her time. Because you could have been going different times and they said no. That's why no today is just no today but not no tomorrow. Kairos comes. Right? And so God has Kronos and Kairos times. So the Bible says... In the fullness of times, Jesus was manifested. Jesus had to come at a specific time up under a specific government with a specific people with a specific ruler in a specific area of time. It's the reason he didn't come 4,000 years ago, but 2,000 years ago. So God is, God is uh, acculturated with this thing called time. There is also timing in prayer. We can always pray because the Bible says we ought to pray without, season, without ceasing, but there are what we call seasons of prayer. Uh, you know, it's totally different if you're praying while you're cooking and you're praying in your prayer closet. It's just different, right? There are times when the heavenlies are open. There are times in the earth realm that God is dedicated to certain things. So we've been learning. Why the Bible says third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour. Why is the Lord saying during the ninth hour, during the sixth hour? Those are times, significant times. And in those significant times, there are, please write this down, spiritual advantages during certain times. Spiritual advantages during certain times. So I was teaching on 6 a.m. prayer this morning that 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., is the fifth watch, and that is the time of koinonia. That is a time with, of fellowship with God. I can always do, but I'll do that, but there is a spiritual advantage in that time. So your bed, your covers, your sheets, St. Mattress will fight you not to get up at that time. Amen. It will say, no, roll over. Go back to sleep. After all, you know all the stuff you did yesterday because the spirit realm understands that there is kairos. And the Holy Spirit is knocking and nudging you on your heart. He says last week, the next week, we're going to get up on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're going to get up on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 a.m. and prayer and pray. Now, you know the devil ain't telling you to do that. And so God gives us that word, and then we good Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then Monday roll around, and it's our time to do what God told us to do. And then all of a sudden, St. Mattress holds us. St. Mattress. And then what we say, oh, well, we'll, we'll just do it next week. Oh, well, 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 maybe if I get up at 7. And then you, your alarm clock keeps your alarm clock is alignment with God, in alignment with God. It keeps saying, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. So, so, so then we negate that time, and then we don't understand that in that time was not only Kronos, but it was Kairos, and God was trying to create something in our life through that area of prayer. And so many Christians drift along in their spiritual life, missing Kairos moments. And then we shake our fist at heaven and we say, God, you not fair. Where's my breakthrough? Where's my blessing? Where's my healing? God said it was tucked in your Kairos moment. Kairos moment. Jesus is 100% man and 100% God and still got up at 6 a.m. 
Now, I'm not bringing anybody under compulsion to get you under, up at 6 a.m. I'm just sharing the word of the Lord with you. So if God is telling you to do that, then you need to do that. But I'm telling you that if the spirit of God is asking you to do that, if he's assigning you and putting you on your post watchman, it is not just for spiritual exercise. There is literally life and death hanging in the balance. There are things in the word of God that we call seasons. Let me tell on myself a little bit because my wife is in here. So I was uh, back then I was tithing. I don't believe in that now. But I was tithing and giving, giving my money to the Lord, and, uh, and I shook my fist. I said, God, I'm tithing. You know I had my preaching for God, I'm tithing, <laughs> giving that money, my church, yeah, church, my money, serving the man of God, the woman of God, and you won't let me get a house. You unfair. And the heathen, they got houses and cars, and they just so happy. And God patted me on my shoulder. He said, oh. Uh, go, go go look at your credit score. 432. Who going to give you a house with 432? He said your, your credit is, in, is, is a report card of your integrity. Why do you think that I'm going to skip over the person you owe so that you don't have to pay them like I don't love them? And what I had to go do, fix my credit. But guess what? At that moment when me and Pastor T were preparing for a house, I couldn't. So what did I have to do? Wait for another season because I missed my what? Now, God is faithful. He's long suffering. But, but we, there are certain seasons you don't want to miss. You don't know when it's coming back around. So watchmen have this perspective that every assignment from heaven is important. So we must be on our post. Amen. And so if I am familiar with the movements of heaven and this is how God operates, I have an expectation that I have an assignment. Mother Gwen comes up here on Wednesdays and pray. That's her post. That's her post, right? You have a post. Don't miss the post. Somebody's breakthrough is depending on it. Amen. I hope I beat that dead horse enough. All right. It's walking. All right, so let's go to the sixth watch, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see Brother Charles in the house. Amen. The sixth watch. The sixth watch. That's your watch. Praise the Lord. Listen, I don't think I said this for the, um, for the fifth watch. Let me just say this, and then I'm going to go to the sixth watch. Sixth watch, people. Rising at six, between six and nine, you pray. Listen, we need you. Okay. And also, and also, does anybody remember what the witching hour is? 12 to three. All right. Between 12 and three, that's when the cohorts of hell are getting together to strategize your day. That's when the cohorts of hell are getting together to strategize what they going to do to you for the day. They shut it down at three. So six thwarts the plan of the enemy. That's why the Bible says command your morning. Bring forth your strong reason. So we get up and just eat the Wheaties and the Cheerios. We flip over and just look at Facebook to see who. And have no idea that emissaries from hell have been sent against your assignment. And so you feel the attack during the day. Why my boss acting up and my kids and this and that and that? I'm telling you, it's not happenstance. It's not luck. These are strategic things that are set up against your life. But God has given us strategy and strength. He's given us a spiritual advantage through prayer. All right, so I forgot to say that last week, so I want to say that. All right, so the sixth watch. The sixth watch. This is the hours of 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. The sixth watch. This is the hours of 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. All right, so this is... The hour to see God's promises fulfilled. This is the time to ask for supply of the day. Between the hours of 9 and 12 is where God told the Israelites, he said, now you go to those Egyptians and you ask them for everything that you need on your journey. 
Ask him for the Jordans you need. Go get them herring bones. Get all that. We packing all that up. We taking it with us. Between the hours of 9 and 12, this is the hour. These are the hours to ask for the promises of God to be fulfilled. This is also the, the hour. Please write this down. To ask the Lord for healing, for prosperity, forgiveness, and strength. Typically around the world, 9 a.m. is what we call the hour of industry. That is why most uh, work hours start at 9. That's the hour where we should be industrious. Healing, prosperity, forgiveness, and strength. Healing, prosperity, forgiveness, and strength. Amen. This is also the hour as well to crucify the deeds of the flesh, according to Romans 8, 12 and 15, because between these hours was also where wherein our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was crucified. And the Bible says that there was darkness upon the face of the earth for the space of three hours. Let's pay attention to those numbers. The Holy Spirit is not just spitting out numbers to be spitting out numbers. There's a reason things happen in three. Seven, eight, right? We're not talking about uh, psychics. We're not talking about astrology. I don't believe in any of that. But God does have biblical numerology. He does. Three, the number for Trinity, right? Five, the number for grace. Six, the number for man. Seven, the number for completion. Eight, the numbers of new beginnings. Nine is the number for fruitfulness. Ten is the number for government. Like we, Those numbers exist for a reason. So if things are happening on the fifth, the seventh, Pay attention. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you enlightenment. The things that you see in the Bible that God completed, you see in sevens. It's the number of completion. I wish I could take you to the book of Genesis and show you how if we read every seventh word in the Bible. It spells out a sentence. It talks about what God is going to do in the end time. All right, those numbers make sense. Okay. Pastor, yes. Yes. So that's the so whenever we see six in the Bible, it's the designation of man, and it is also um, from God's perspective, and it is the designation of the Antichrist against man. So that's why the Book of Revelation says, "Mark the number of the beast; his number is six, six, six. So that's the uh, the Antichrist, that's the beast, and uh, that's the false prophet. All three of their assignment is to kill men. So number and man was created on the sixth day. So that number sim symbolizes mankind. We're not activated because I can remember when, when, you know, I carried my baby six months. Mm. Then uh, he was the phone for six months. God healed him in six months. Mm. You know, so I'll, it was thread, you know, all together. Yeah. yeah. Six months they found because six months, you know, because he's born with six like your six yeah. months that he carried back. Yeah. So that's why I was asking you. I wanted to know. Well, I tell you this, 12 is the number for perfect government. That's why Jesus had 12 disciples. All right, so I won't get into that here, but, you're, but, but yeah, it absolutely means something. But six in general is the number of man. It's the number of man. That's why he created man on the sixth day. And let me give you some a little insight here. God created man on the sixth day. He rested on the seventh, right? Y'all know that. Yeah. But the reason God rested on the seventh is because he didn't have to do any creation anymore. But creation never stopped. He only stopped it because you here. That's our job now. We bring forth the things of God. So the creation didn't stop. He just gave it to us. He gave it to us. So we create the possibilities that God already has in his mind. You're not God. I'm not God. But God already has possibilities that are manifested through me and you. Healing, miracles, manifestation, salvation, deliverance. Those are spiritual advantages that already exist in the mind of God. And God brings us here to create those possibilities. That's right. And in his likeness. And have dominion. We need those advantages to do it. You own it, Phaedra. All right. So that's the sixth watch. And I'm going to speed a little today because I'm getting through all of them tonight. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So the sixth watch. 
let's make this decree, then I'm going to move on to the seventh watch. That's all I want to say for the sixth watch. So I want to make these decrees. I want us to pray them, pray them together. I'm going to say them, and then I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I entrust my work to you this day, and I know my plans will work out well. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Because I reverence your name, your goodness shines on me like the sun with healing in his wings. I give myself completely to you as a living soul who has been raised from the dead. And I offer myself as a tool in your hands for your good purpose in Jesus name. Now, come on, give God a hand of praise if you believe that. Hallelujah. Let me give you these scripture references to go back and study as, as, as I move into um, the seventh watch. So please write down Ephesians 5 and 20. Ephesians 5 and 20. These correspond with the sixth watch. Ephesians 5 and 20. Then there is Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Y'all know that. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all oh, that is within me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All right, Colossians 3 and 17. Please write that down. All right, Colossians 3, 17. All right. Let's move to the seventh watch. This is my second favorite watch. I'm alive at this time. The seventh watch. This is the watch that is pertinent to shaking of foundations and judgment. Shaking of foundations and judgment. Shaking of foundations and judgment. This is the time to enter into the secret place of the Most High, according to Psalms 91 and 1. I encourage everybody in here, if you work, you don't work, you're a business owner, non-business owner, I said about this last week, there are significant times of prayer, 6 a.m., 12 to 3. 12 to 3. Sorry, Penny. So 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 3 p.m., those are just significant hours in general. If you work on a job and you have an opportunity to take your break at 12, use 12 o'clock to pray. You don't have to have do it the whole hour, but use 12 noon to pray. There's a general principle for the believers that we pray three times a day. We grow to that point. But there was a general principle. Let me even take it up a notch. There was a spiritual expectation that we pray at least three times a day. 6 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m. Y'all remember when uh, they were trying to catch Daniel up on his prayers, and the Bible said he turned his face to the wall, opened his windows, and prayed three times a day? 6 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m. Right, 12 noon is a significant time. If you happen to get a, a lunch break there, you know, I know you got to check your Facebook, you got to check your Instagram, you got to call your boo, you got to call your cousins. Set aside a little time to talk to the Lord. Amen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. At, at, at my former ministry, like one of the things, Pastor T know this, Dr. Tiff know this, we all in ministry together. One of the things that we learned was to work and pray. Like that was huge. Like you, you were cleaning the toilets, but you were praying. You were washing the walls, but you were praying, right? And so absolutely God still honors that time of sacrifice. Yeah, they might think something wrong with you, but um, you know, they're looking at you. But heaven knows what you're doing. All right. So why is this a time of going into the secret place of the Most High? Because Psalm 91 
Psalm 91. Psalm 91 says there are, there is destruction. Let's go to that scripture. Let's go to Psalm 91. There is destruction that stalks at noonday. Go to Psalm 91. There is destruction that stalks at noonday. Psalm 91. Let me read, let me read, because this gives us, clues us in to some things that happen at night, things that happen in the noonday, all right? Psalm 91, let me start in verse 1. I'm in King James Version. He that dwelleth in the secret place, oh, I thought you said, oh, go ahead and quote it there, of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. Surely... He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid, because there are terrors that come at night. That's where we get the words clinically and say, hey, prophet, and psychologically, night terrors. That's real. I grew up in the 80s. They used to talk about witches riding your back. That was real. Like, I used to have dreams where I couldn't move, I couldn't get up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all yeah. remember that? Some of y'all still probably having it. Yeah. And then he, that, you know, that spirit tried to muffle your mouth. That's, that's, those, are, those are night terrors. Listen, uh, you got kids. I'm talking to the brothers first and then single mother second because you got to pick up the slack. During the night watch, walk your home and pray over your children. Walk your home and pray over your children. I do not want to get into this, but there are certain spirits that operate at night, but in particular, that is one. And there are two spirits that operate at night that come in adolescence, right, and in singleness. It's called uh, succubus and incubus. Amen. Those are spiritual entities that come to have sex with you. Yeah. Make sure y'all are old enough yeah. in your sleep. Yeah. Right. That is real. Wet dreams are clinical terms. Let me give you the spiritual term. Like depression is a clinical term. Spirit of heaviness is the biblical term. Wet dreams is clinical. Right? Those are real spirits. You have to be very careful what you fall asleep listening to. Watching. Or even who next to you. All right. So let me get back to the word. So verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Because there is an arrow that comes by day. I'm talking about that. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Pestilence that walketh in darkness. I do want to speak to this really quick. So like whenever we have like COVID-19, like famines that enter the land, like you, if, you, if you go back and look at the research and talk about the people who quote unquote uh, identify the beginnings of these things, they always tell you that they were in a lab at night. They always tell you that they were in a lab. It was in the nighttime where they discovered these things, right? Because that's when pestilence comes. It comes from the witching hour. We're conjuring up things to be able to disseminate into the earth realm. That's why we got to be on our post. There are some things that should never hit earth because of me and you. Amen. There are certain things our kids should never experience because we're on our post. Amen? Amen. Yeah, it could, it, it could be. I mean, you know, naturally, you, you could have ate something that messed up your sleep, or you can have sleep apnea, all that type of stuff. But there are a lot of times where we're up under spiritual, spiritual attack in, in, our, in, our, in our sleep. And that's Job chapter 35, by the way. In, in your, like, like the, the spirit of God is not the only spirit that comes into your sleep. Please know that. Please know that. You got to know the word of God and be filled with the spirit of God to know when it's God and when it's not. Because there's some people who went to sleep. And saw something in that dream and got up and did it, and it was none but the devil. The devil coerced them. The devil, the devil convinced them. It wasn't the spirit of God. I'm telling you, I work with people. Lord have mercy. I work with people who have tried to kill their spouse, kill their kids. And they said, why did you do it? I had a dream. I had a dream she was cheating on me. God didn't send that dream. 
And I would tell you about that spirit, but I don't want to get into that. All right, let me keep reading the scripture. All right, and I don't want to make you devil scared. I'm trying to make you devil conscious. Because please understand, the devil is under your feet. But he is not under your feet if you don't have spiritual intelligence. Amen. Why? 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. For we are not ignorant concerning Satan's devices. Ignorance means I simply don't know. But if I don't know... I don't know. I am being tricked by his devices. Please know that. If I don't know, right? If I don't know. All right. So verse six, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Here it is. The destruction that wasteth at noonday. Right? So that's why Psalm 91 is important because there are spiritual emissaries at that time that come during the noon hour. The noon hour. The noon hour hour. This is the time that the sun is at its fullest and it should yield its optimum best. Amen. So this is also the time where we expect the best outcomes for our life. If you have a plan, if you have a business an ideal, maybe because God has been putting something in your heart and you're waiting for it to come, come to fruition, bring it to God in prayer during this hour. Bring it to God in prayer during this hour. This is the time that the sun is at its highest strength. And guess what? This is the time that the S-O-N is breaking strength. Amen. I can't see them. Hold on. Let me go on Facebook. That's it right there. Trees, you should be at church. And your mom is defending you, so I'm going to answer this question. Let's see. There you go, mama. That's right. <laughs> Let me look. Okay. I don't see it. Ask her to text it to your niece so I don't I don't see it online. All right. Yes, and judgment. The shaking of foundations and judgment. A time to cut out all satanic arrows that are released at this time. Listen, this is a time where justice is due to the people of God. We're on the seventh wide. If you got court cases, things being held up in court, accusations against you, this is a time to pray against those things. I keep saying this repetitively, and I know people may get tired of me saying it, but I'm saying it to make an impression on you. I'm saying it to make an impression on you. The spirit realm is not pie in the sky. The spirit realm is not somewhere up there with clouds and rainbows and little baby angels flying around naked. Please. Don't get caught up in Hollywood. Amen. Yeah. The spirit realm is a real place Hallelujah. with a judicial system, a legal system. There is a reason that God is called the judge. Jesus is called the advocate. That's a lawyer term. And Satan is called the accuser, the prosecuting attorney. There's a reason they have those names. So there is always court being held. That's why Lucifer walks around up there. Remember the book of Job? He goes before God. Why is Lucifer talking to God? Because legally he has the right to be there as the prosecuting attorney. He has the right to go to and fro in the earth. He has that right. That is a legal right. Right? He has that right. And so we have a right, and better yet, a responsibility to show up to court too. The father is there. The advocate is there. The accuser is there saying, I told you they weren't going to show up. And he has by legal right to do what God is allowing him to do when you don't show up. How do I show up? Prayer. 
So, the, so there is a religiosity in the church that just wants us to think prayer is just something we do when we feel like it. It's just something that we do because God wants us to do it. And it's something you do to feel good. No, I'm telling you, this is legislation happening. This is legislation happening. And so whenever we're called to prayer and we don't show up, there are consequences to that. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that to make you aware because the reverse is true. When I do show up, there are just certain things that got to happen. When I do show up, there are certain things that can't happen. It's a real place with a real legislation. And listen. Every believer, God showed me this in the spirit. This is not in the Bible. This is Antoinology. You're under no obligation to receive this. But when I pray, when I pray, and God allows me to go into the spirit room, it's not all the time. But when I do, I, what I see is I see a huge, I see a huge, a huge white room, and it's, and it's just full of light. And I see all of these people around this table. But I can't see their faces. I can just make out their image. But all I know is that when I start praying to get to, to a certain place, when I come up to where it is, there is a chair that I have to pull up and sit down at. Every time. Go ahead, Mother Boy. Not only that, Pastor, the same room you talk about, I saw a compartment. And I asked God what they were. And he said, this is gifts and these things that my people, my children can receive. Yeah. They ask me. I mean, lay. Yeah. And it was like I was looking and it was like I was there and I saw it and I said, Lord, what is this? And yeah. he said, This is the uh the gift room I just wanted to come. Yeah. Know, anything you wanted, you could get. My pastor used to say that he used to say he saw a locker and he'd open a locker and he'd see all the stuff that we were supposed to have yes. that we never received. Yes. I believe that. God give you give you your own experiences. All right. Um so show up is what I'm saying. Show up. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I'll tell her I'm going to call her. because She texts me about it. I'm going to call her. I can't give Treach no one word send his answer on here. No Lord Jesus. Treach, we going to talk. All right. Seventh watch. Twelve to three. All right. Let's go to our last watch. The eighth watch. The last watch. Our eighth watch. And this is from the hour of 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So on the Jewish calendar, they end their day at 6 all this overtime stuff we do as Americans, they don't do all that. You know, that's America got us like that. We'll work, we'll work to 12 and got to get up at 3 to make some more money that the government trying to take. They shut it down at 6. And if you ain't, at the, you, you ain't in the house at 6, it's seen as being blasphemous. Right? They're moving more and more to, to, to becoming westernized, but that is at least their ideology. All right. So the eighth watch, and this is Tish's favorite word. Tish, keep me on transformation. This is the hour for transformation. Transformation. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, it does. Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right, so this is the hour of transformation. What does that mean? The hour of dying to self and rejoicing in the power of Jesus Christ. 3 p.m. is the hour that Jesus died. This is the hour he took on the sins of man so that we can be reconciled through his blood. The disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration saw Jesus turn into his glorious self was during this time, the hour of transformation. So when I say transformation, they all know that is one of the five principles that God gave me in Pastor T, transformation. 
And so we believe that we become more like Christ. Listen, when you are praying, there's a lot of people on Facebook. When you are praying, <laughs> when you are praying, now you've seen that many people. When you are praying, you are being transformed. Remember the four reasons that we pray? The number one reason is to be transformed. It's not to get stuff. It's not for petitions. It's not for decrees. We do pray for those things. But primarily, numero uno, I pray so that I can be shaped and changed into the image of Christ. This world wants me to be everybody else besides him. Right? That's the goal, ladies and gentlemen. That's the goal to become more like Christ. And that used to be a message of the old church, and we have lost that idea that we want to be like Christ. It truly is the goal. And when God looks at our life, he's looking for his son in us. He's looking for his son in us. So this is the hour for transformation. This is the hour for transformation. So we talked last week about the manifestations of the flesh. Hey, precious. Seeing you in a while. The manifestations of the flesh. So y'all remember Galatians 5 and 19? There's 17 manifestations of the flesh. 17 manifestations of the flesh. Nine fruits of the spirit. The first three have to do with my relationship with God. The second three have to do with my relationship with you. And the third three have to do with my relationship with myself. Right. So this is the time I bring those manifestations of the flesh. And I ask the Lord to change me. Listen, don't you walk around letting people say, well, that's just how you are. That's a lie. Yeah, I was talking to somebody today and they were trying to convince me. You know, pastor, you know, I understand what you're saying about that sanctification stuff. And that's how we say, I understand what you're saying about that sanctification stuff, but God wants you to come as you are. And I say, that's absolutely right, but he don't want you to stay as you are. Amen. Come as you are, uh, battered, tattered, hurt, and in pain, but he don't want to leave you like that. Amen. He don't want to leave you like that. I know that's your, I know that's the problem you used to have, and that was you in your old life. But that thing has no right staying in the new version of you. Man. Well, that's just how we did it in our family. Go ahead, Penny. I heard him talk before that, um, Get that mic, Penny. You know, you like E of Hutton when you speak. I heard it talk before that things that we can't control is a surefire sign of it's demonic. So, like, mm. when people be like, that's just the way that I am. I yeah. talk too much. I can't control it. That's because it's a demon. You're being oppressed. Mm. I definitely agree that you're up under spiritual attack. <laughs> if you can't control your life, one of the fruits of the spirit is temperance. It's self-control. And so if you are unable to experience that fruit of the spirit, you are spiritually being attacked. Y yes, sir. You had your hand up? Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Um, but, but either we believe the power of God is available to help us change, or we don't. There is no in-between. I, I, and I said this last time, I want to say this. Listen, listen. We don't want anything to remain in our life that's going to mock our purpose. Remember when we went to the book of James? How we took the manifestations of the flesh and how they start off as little children walking along with us. Oh, it's just, it's just a little adultery, you know, just a little side piece. Just a little lie. And then that thing grows up with you. Y'all remember what James says happens? Does anybody remember how he says the process works? It's like childbirth. Anybody remember? Right? Right. It starts off as, what does it start off with? Anybody remember? Oh, I'm a bad teacher. Let's go to James. Yes. 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 Come on, Tiff. Make me look good. Don't let me down, Tiff. That's it. Let's go back there. Because I want to attack the devil right now. If you don't know, go to James chapter 1. 
Because this is the hour of transformation. Some of this stuff I got to grow past. I'm not carrying it into my life year after year. Go ahead and get that microphone. <laughs> big brain, that's it, Tim. Dream I big. Big brain. Um, I was just looking at the time, like the watch times, and it's just, it, I don't see it as a coincidence that most of the pertinent times of watchmen, like the eighth hour, it's always during a time where we as people are busy. Yeah, that's a great point. Like we either at work, great point. we trying to sleep. We're trying to busy. do something. We're busy. Busy. So these, to me, these watch hours are also sacrificial hours. What you going to sacrifice? That's a great point. To stand before God for what you believe in for. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Trees, that's James chapter 1. That's where we are. James chapter 1. I see your uh, request now. Let's go to James chapter 1. This is spiritual wisdom. Nothing. We're going to get out early. All right. Yes. We're going to get out before 730. Um, Lord have mercy, Jesus. It's hot, Mother Gwen. It's hot. See these folks fanning? Verse ver five. It's 110 degrees outside. If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and abradeth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wind. Of the sea, wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, the rich in that he is made low. As the flower, flower of the grass, he shall pass away. The sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, the flower falleth thereof, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade in his ways. Verse 12. Blessed. Is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Remember I told you last week that every time you beat temptation, you earn something in the spirit. Every time you beat temptation, you earn something in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God doesn't tempt people. He will test you. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Listen, listen to the process. Here is the process, ladies and gentlemen. But every man is tempted. So Dr. Tip said we start off with the temptation. You can't be tempted with something you don't like. He not tempted me with crack cocaine. I'm not going to smoke it. <laughs> but if it's a little Debbie, Debbie cake. Every man is tempted. What does the temptation do? Draws you away. What does it draw you away from? Y'all remember God and who? Yeah, we still, that's still what people. Yeah, the people, the people that's assigned to your life to help you. I ain't fooling with you no more. Oh, what he does is he create a conflict between me and you. Now I say you want to go to McDonald's. You say you want to go to Burger King. Well, you always want to go to McDonald's, and you always want to go to Burger King. I ain't talking to you no more. Now y'all, your prayer partner, y'all don't talk no more over two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. <laughs> but you see how he draws you away. That's what the Bible says. Listen how the process. It says that temptation it'll draw you away. And what am I drawn away by? My lust, the thing that I want that I shouldn't have. And the Bible says it entices me. In other words, it has to dress up that mess. It has to dress up that sin. And the first way, the first way that the enemy dresses up sin is, on, is, is through all the cloak and the pretty dress of compromise. Oh, it ain't that bad. You know, we, we just did that but we did do that I just did this it, it has to dress it up because if Satan don't dress it up you won't get involved in it alright verse 15 so then when lust has conceived what did we say conceived was that's a pregnancy term that lets you know this thing been growing with you it bringeth forth sin and when sin is finished that means sin had a plan for your life 
It had a desire from the very first time temptation fell. Temptation saw you and said, oh, I love that Pastor Butler. How can I get him to do this? How can I get him to lust after the things that God knows? I'll dress it up in the things that he likes. Oh, and I'll make him just compromise just a little bit. And he'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And every time he does it, it empowers this thing that started off real small. And all of a sudden, this thing is grown. This thing, I'm full grown pregnant. And so I know pastors who preach powerful words of God, who help people get set free and deliver. And then they go in their hotel room and die from a cocaine overdose because they grew up with that thing. Instead of bring forth death, it'll kill your relationships, it'll kill your money, it'll kill your finances, it'll kill your marriage, it'll kill, it'll kill everything in your life till you left with nothing. That's what it does, right? And so we were talking about the hour of transformation. Uh, it, it, is, it is my desire to change. I don't want anything that's not of God to grow up with me. And I know I'm talking about some very serious things, but it could be small things. It could just be laziness, procrastination. Those things will grow up with you. God would say, get up and do this and do that. You're working on your job and you're always in your supervisor's office because you'll never get your work done. But we say, that ain't church. That's my job. But the Lord says, everything we do it, do as. Procrastination will kill your, it'll kill your purpose. How many times did God have to say, write the book? Go help sister so-and-so. Go do this. Go do that. God, I'm going to get around to it. And then people don't get around to it and they die. Listen, listen. Me and Pastor Ford were just talking. We just talking about two people we know that, that, that's going to be with the Lord. And one of them was just getting started in their purpose. They had just got their license. And what I do, they were getting ready to get started and was gone. Gone. Life is not about duration. It's about donation. You don't know how long you're going to be here. Oh, glory. So I want to be transformed. I want to be changed. You might pick on me. You might laugh at me, call me Holy Roller, all of that. But I refuse to be the same person from day to day. And I have a check engine light in my own personal life. If the things of my former life are still attracted to me, it's a check engine light. There got to be some time where I'm not fighting off my old sins because my old sin is not attracted to me anymore. They got to be. Now, every now and then, because I know you super cute and all that stuff, so every now and then they're going to wink. You know what I'm saying? All that. Every now and then, marijuana might, you know, but, 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 but there got to be a, a point to where you changed. And there is a visible change. And your old life sees the change and doesn't want you anymore. The same people still want you, still using the same game and same joke, and we still falling for the same maneuvers and tactics. Transformation time. I'm not condemning anybody, but I'm bringing a strong word of caution that we got to grow up. There is a generation waiting for you. Hallelujah. So this flirting with former things and former life, get away from that. Go ahead, prophet. Come on. Can y'all give her the microphone? That's E of Hudden, too. Yeah. Come on, Anissa. Don't you hide. Hey, family. <laughs> hey, Anissa. So just off of what you were saying just now, um, so <laughs> this name will mean something to Butler, but it won't mean anything to you guys. But oh, Lord. if you uh, remember, and I didn't read the books, I just remember people, women talking about them. The Zane books. Mm. All right. So I had a Zane experience, right, with this person by the name of Corey. Mm. So recently, that person contacted me, but he's blocked on everything. Hello, somebody. And so he contacted me through an alias page on Facebook, right? So moving forward, when you got into calling, you know, and thinking you came back for the person that you met, when you, we was Zane booking, um, which was just a year or so ago. Hello, somebody. Come on, Nisa. Um, I was like, oh, yeah. So I, I was like, okay. The thing was, I didn't even feel what I thought I would feel when he reached out, right? I yeah. was flattered like, ha, hey, you found me, right? Yeah. 
So then, but I was like, well, um, what we exchanged numbers and he FaceTimed. And I said, dang, that's what you look like because I ain't seen him. Yeah. And so um, when he got to trying to go there, I said it without even feeling any type. I was actually like annoyed. Mm. And I was like, yeah, so you're looking for that person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's that, you know, I understand, mm -hmm. but she's not here anymore. Come on. And so what ended up happening was, you know, he tried to run that game of, why do you think I just want that? And he, at one point he said, am I, I said, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I'm going for. I'm in line for that. Yeah. And he said, well, am I not, do I not give you any of those characteristics? And I said, I don't know anything about you besides that. Mm. I said, so I can't give you a fair, um, a set. I, I can't give it to you. And he says, but I'm just saying based on, and I said, well, if I have to go on based on what I know, no. <clears throat> and so... But you know the devil ain't gonna give up easy. No, yeah. So then he He's was patient. like, he was like, oh, he was like, okay. He was like, well, dang, you just. And so in my mind, you know, we get off the phone, and I'm thinking to myself, you've been a little too harsh. But, and then I talked to another one of my friends, and God bless her, cause I love her. And she was like, um, she's super holy. And she was, <laughs> and so she, when I told her what I said, and I said exactly what I'm telling y'all, she was like, well, you know, we gotta be uh, cautious not to. Um, damaged because God loves those people too. And so I listened to her in all fairness and I said, listen, if a vicious dog get behind you, are you going to run for your life? Or are you going to say, hey, doggy, he don't, bite. don't bite me, doggy. I said, what are you going to do? And she said, well, prophet, if you put it that way, I said, I'm running for my life. Ay I'm running for my life. So then, so then he, so then he comes back and then he's like, well, I mean, I'm just like, this Negro ain't trying to go nowhere. <laughs> so finally, I, I was having a rough day. And I know I, this is big for you. Oh, uh, what? This, uh, this is, is huge. Big. I know who this is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is huge. This ain't no test of phony. You see what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. So then he, he keeps coming back, and I'm like, this one day, I'm just having a day. You yeah. Know, my mama passed away, and I, I'm just having a day. And so he was like, well, he was taking it all personal. I was like, Corey, this don't got nothing to do with you. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, it got everything. I tell you what. <clears throat> Goodbye. Mm. And I blocked them. I mm. just told them bye, and mm. I blocked them. Y'all don't feel bad. Yeah. And what happened after Glory that was God. another one hit me up. Then the ex-husband hit me up. Emma Series. And I said, yep. oh, That's okay. what it is, Pastor T. You don't miss me? Mm -hmm. You don't love me? You remember when? Nope. Blocked. Nope. Come blocked. On. Nope. Come blocked. On, Come so on. I just want to share that testimony. Your girl is well on her way. You done encouraged somebody in here tonight. Hello. Yeah. And I'm proud of myself. You done encouraged somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because those jokers be in the way of who you're supposed to be with anyway. They just wasting time for who you're supposed to actually meet. Oh, you know, you would do your boy like that. You in the way of progress. Move. So it is all bad. <laughs> but, but you know what your assignment be, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wisdom. Help us. Hello. Okay, oh, that's it. So he so he got a form of godliness, right? And so and so he was able to like pray and book and all that. So so what happened was my no, so what happened was my mama died and he had a little money, y'all. So I was like, okay, you know, and, and let me just say this. I grew up with my father, so I don't really need your money and I'm a hustler by myself. But it was nice to get nice gifts, Thanks. right? And so um, so like we going through this, my mama passed away, and so I'm not going to lie. I'm just been wounded and off of my post. Mm. So when he thought I didn't see him, I seen him. I just didn't have the energy, mm. right? I just didn't have the energy. And so I just started praying silently. Mm. God, look, I'm wounded. I don't have the time. I don't yeah. even want to have this conversation. Yeah. I just need some help. And so as I was talking to my friends, right? And let me tell you something else. 
Stop talking to your friends. Just go to the Father and talk to somebody else outside your friends. And I'm going to tell you why you can't talk to your friends. Because if all of y'all are desiring the same thing, struggling in the same way, you're not helping each other. Mm. We're giving each other the wrong mm. advice, okay? And so what ends up happening is I'm, I'm like, I'm going to my friends. Going to my, and why am I going to my friends? Well, the Holy Spirit is already letting me know, right? So it's really my fault. It ain't my friend's fault. I'm just saying. You just got to be careful. So then, so I'm going through all of this stuff or whatever, and, and I'm just miserable, to be honest. He's taking me all these places, and I'm, and y'all, I ain't want to seem ungrateful, so I'm posting it, and I'm like, oh, he's so sweet. He done bought me a necklace. I know y'all seen it, yes, right? Yes, and so ma'am. I was like, it was really sweet, but I really was miserable. It's H E double L. I was miserable. Yeah. So I'm like, and that's that's a place, that's not a cuss word. And so I was like, okay, God. I'm like, okay, Lord, like I need some help. Cause what, and I'm gonna be honest, what nothing really, it wasn't, um, I don't know, is this your daddy? Lord help us. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. It wasn't that good. Yeah. Y'all follow me? Yeah. It wasn't that good. There was no nothing connecting. Yeah. You feel me? I just was there and I don't really know why. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so finally one day, a few months ago, I was like, I'm talking to my friends. They're like, girl, it's hard to find somebody like that. And it's hard to do this and it's hard that's to do the that. Advice. And I'm like, you know what? I just don't believe that God has a me here and not a he that fits me. Mm. I just don't believe that. Mm. And so I just stopped talking to my friends about it. And one day I just dismissed the brother. Mm. I was like, you know what? This is not God. Mm. You know, and I seen when you did this, 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 and this. And I knew when you did that, 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 and that. And I knew you was going to do that before you did that. Mm. I, know you did, I know you thought I was wounded and my back was turned. <clears> but the Lord woke me up and told me about it. Uh-huh. You don't even have to confirm it. It's okay. Right? And so I'm done with that, too. So, y'all, while we on this journey together, because we all on this journey together. Absolutely. Right? Just keep me lifted. But I am just happy to be where I am. And one more thing. I got up and I just turned on Facebook and ran straight into You prayer. back on your post. Oh, hello, somebody. I can see you. I'm back. Yeah, so what ends up happening is I'm listening to you pray. I'm listening to you pray. And I'm and I'm laying there and I'm I'm listening to you talk to us and stuff. And you saying stuff that I'm like, yeah, God, that's that's me. He yeah. right. And so I said, all right, I'm gonna get this together. I didn't realize it was Wednesday, y'all. I didn't know it was Bible study today. And so um, so I done went and did all my errands and all that stuff. And I'm saying, okay, God, by the time it's time to go back to church, I'm gonna be ready. I didn't realize it was tonight, right? So I go to the house and by the, and, and something good happened, and I was excited because everything been going crazy. And so I was like, all right. Lord, I'm going to go ahead. And then it dawned on me that it's Wednesday. And you guys, I couldn't figure out why I really hadn't been back to Bible study, right? I I thought it was just because I was wounded. I didn't want people saying, hey, how you doing? How mm -hmm. your family and them doing? Because mm -hmm. when people do that, it's like a person coming and hugging you when you're crying. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to pull it together. And when you rub my back, it makes me fall apart, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, I'm just going to keep my distance. I've been to a few other churches, y'all. Well, I just went because the people didn't know my name. And I was like, why am I sitting in here? But um, so... Because I was just trying to get some kind of Jesus, right? I, That's I hope, what you know. I hope they not watching because yeah. I don't mean no harm. Yeah. But anyways, and so with that being said, I was sitting there and I and y'all ever heard the Holy Spirit ask you a rhetorical question? It's rhetorical because he know the answer to it. But he asked the question for it to ping you. And so what ended up happening was he said, I heard him. He said, God. Now, y'all, this wasn't, I didn't, I had never thought about it. The last time I went to church, because I was in, I was double-minded. I was saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to daddy house. I need to drop my spending night bag off. Then I'm going to go to church. And I'm doing all this in my mind. And while I'm doing all that in my mind, then, there, then the Lord says, God, the last time I went to church to Bible study, I, my mama got killed. Mm. I had not put that together. Wow. It had not connected. I wow. know it was God. Right, right. And so then... Mm. And then I chuckled about it, and I'm like, the devil is dirty, right? Mm. But then immediately fear tried to come. So what I did was, y'all, I came to church first, mm. and then I'm going to go to daddy's house afterwards. Mm. All right, y'all keep me lifted. I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> now we overcoming by testimony. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that, because people be thinking that they won't say it. I appreciate you, Anisu. Mother Gwen? And then we're going to stand after Mother Gwen. We get out of here.
I want to share what God has been showing me about the connections that uh, why we can't stop doing some things. Mm. Just like we have a, 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 a soul tied to certain people, we have a soul tied to the world. Mm. And we have to disconnect it. We have to uh, uh, continue to, to do what you did, you know, continue to talk to yourself, continue. And, and I, me personally would probably spiritually do a cut the uh, cord. You know, I said, I cut the cord from this world because that's what I do with my flesh in the name of Jesus. I said, I cut my spirit away from my flesh, and I'm going to uh, be in charge of my flesh. But it, I actually saw a, 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 a cord in the spirit realm connected to the world and uh, with people why they can't do what they're supposed to do. Because yeah. their mindset, that's why God said renew your mind because your mind is still connected to the world. Amen. And so you have to renew your mind by continuing putting a, a word in your mind. And if you don't, it's go, you're going to stay connected. You Amen. have to recognize that you're no longer connected to that, Amen. you know, to the world. Amen. But I actually saw the, the card of, of people with, you know, connected to the world. Thank you, Mother Gwen. Come on, y'all, let's stand. Thank y'all so much. I hope that this series has been a blessing. Listen, so next week, you say you want to pray, Penny? No. Oh. I didn't know what you said. <laughs> right. So, you, so usually it's a time where you feel like your spiritual senses are heightened the most, and you feel like God is calling you to be with him. Usually that's how you can tell. And and it's like and if it's nighttime, you keep getting up at the same time. Like that, that doesn't happen in the daytime. But there are certain times in the day where you just feel more connected to the God that might he may be calling to you that. And some people are, are called to multiple watches, you know. So um but I will have this um available online for y'all next week. It'll be up under our web on our website under sermons and then y'all can go access the information. Amen. Amen. Brother Charles, can you come pray for us? Amen. We got a modern day Solomon among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all be careful out here in this heat. God gives us wisdom. I saw one of these high schools running these kids out. In the, I'm like, my, I ain't seen no water out there or nothing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. Father, we come in the volume of the book that is written of us to do thy will, O Lord, thanking and praising you for all of your many blessings and your benefits that you reign on us all day. We thank you right now. We thank you for these that were called and the answer that they give, and they came tonight, Lord, that they might receive from you in the name of Jesus, that we might be fed of your word, that we might be victorious, not only against the devil, but against ourselves. Not only against ourselves, but against the lust of the eye, the pride of the flesh. Lord, in the name of Jesus right now, Father, we thank you for this house, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for this place, we thank you for the leadership that is here. And we ask that you continue to lead them and guide them in the name of Jesus right now. Father, as we leave this place, I speak the blood of Jesus over each and every one that is here in the name of Jesus. And I lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you right now. Now keep us all, oh Lord. Trouble us at night that we might know our watches, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open our hearts and our mind. Touch us in our inner man, Lord. In the name of Jesus right now. Give us strength and courage right now. Sound minds, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help us to confess those things that you have said about us. In the name of Jesus. That they might go to the Father and they might be manifest in our life. Lord, we love you today and we thank you.